All right, so basic agenda is going to be a brief, you know, brief introduction of, of organics. I don't know if you guys are using organics at this present time or not. Going to touch a little bit on granular to, to liquid. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the um, old equipment versus brand new equipment and how your you guys' uh, shops are worked out and your equipment out there. So that's a big thing all guys always have problems with or questions about. The actual RAD system itself and then some basic cat calibration stuff. Um, how many of you guys here out of the eight or nine guys here, do we have guys that are using the, the, the product at the present time? Starting to. For Starting to use the product? Okay. Um, and then, uh, so we, you guys are all pretty much uh, just getting into it to learn, learn a little bit, little bit more about it. So, tell you a little bit, bit about what Holganics is and uh, what, you know, you guys probably all pretty much know, but give you a little bit of a brief overview. What Holganics is, is Holganics is 100% organic itself, but it's about, you know, using, it's a, we tag it as a biological metacatalyst, which means uh, we want to use the product and we're not saying get rid of you know, herbicides, fertilizers, or any of that stuff at all, we're saying use the, the base foundation of, of products in the, over the last years have been really synthetic base and we put on some, some organics. Well, what happens if we can take that, turn that completely around, make the biological the base, and then bridge over the actual, you know, synthetic products. And if we can do that, you know, with the regulations that are coming out there, it's getting harder and harder for all of us. It's just a neat way to do it as long as we can give our customers the same results they're used to. And if we can use less uh, inputs, it's, it's a wonderful thing for everybody. And it seems to work out really well. Um, now, on the guys out here now, do we have guys? Uh, any other questions about, about, about Holganics, guys? I mean, you guys probably all know a little bit about Holganics, or you wouldn't be on the call. I mean, I can keep going in that deeper. We can talk about that afterwards. Anybody have any other quick questions about that? Or? No. Nope. Nope, nope. That's, I like that. Um, right now, on the guys we have on the call here, how many guys are granular and how many guys are, are, are liquid? Granular switch to liquid. Granular switch to liquid, okay. What yeah, else we have? Combination um, spring and fall granular and then liquids in between. Okay. And um, anybody else want to speak up or what else we have there? Anybody just straight liquid uh, 100%? Anybody straight granular 100%? All right. Um, how, when I had a lawn care company, guys, and we were running, um, to me, what I've seen and realized is um, we spent a lot of time, and uh, you know, against different guys. I really believe that you know efficiency is a, a huge thing, and labor is a huge thing. And I believe that between six and ten thousand square feet, under under that, it's a fine line. Under six thousand square feet, I really believe that liquid is going to be much more efficient. Over 6,000 square feet, you know, six to 10,000 square feet, it starts to become more more efficient with a mechanized piece piece of equipment. And the reason I say that is really because of the um, the actual granular. You know, every spreader's out there. You got Spiker, you got Lesco, you got you know, you know a whole bunch of different spreaders. They're all made to really do a, a seven foot swath, this or minimum. And then what happens is when you're using that seven foot swath, it works out great. But on a you know quarter acre lawn, how many areas on that lawn are really seven seven foot wide? Uh, you got along air conditioners, you got curbs, you got all sorts of areas. So at the end of the day, we're putting a lot of product on areas that you're not really need to have product walkways, and you're you know I feel you're wasting. And other guys in the industry say you know anywhere from seven to you know twelve percent of product you end up uh, spending spending you know is getting wasted. So you blow off walkways, you do this that the other thing. And if you're pulling a hose, them areas now you can really just you know treat the turf areas that you're actually you know need to actual treat. Um, at the end of the day, now like a lot of guys say, oh, mechanized piece of equipment is so much faster, which I agree 100% if it's getting used in, in the right area. And uh, what happens is with the what we've seen is you know going liquid, it seems like we get the product better. It seems like we could you know have less time on, on walkways, less time on, on blowing off. And also, we just get a better service. Does anybody feel that? Or anybody have any questions about that? Agree? Disagree? I mean, can you give me some some input here, guys? What do you guys think? Oh, I agree about the hose pulling being wasting less product. Okay. Anybody else have any any fears with that? Any any you know? Now, I do believe over 10,000 square feet. Our other biggest thing is is having guys, and we want to make sure we have key you know key guys. We want to keep guys. So we want to make it as easy as possible for guys and make it, you know, we want to make sure they, they stay here and, and keep working for you. So a lot of guys see the mechanized piece of equipment out there, 
but on a you know 10,000 square foot turf area, 10,000 square quarter acre lawn, 10,000 square feet of treatable turf, it probably you can do with an LT rich or a permagreen in four and a half five minutes. If you really time it out and do a stopwatch, you end up spending you know four to five minutes cleaning up and, and taking care of the product after you treat the lawn. And what we've seen a lot of time with pulling hose. You pull the hose, it might take six minutes to do the lawn with pulling a hose, but when you get done the job, the job's done. And that's one thing that, you know, a lot of guys, when we first start talking about it, they'll grain is much more efficient. The other thing I get all the time is that, you know, the perception of the customer. Customers see, they see organic, they think granular, they think granular is better, they think granular doesn't burn the lawns. And there's been a real, in my opinion, been a, bit, a real misconstrued of, to the consumers. And one thing I'll challenge a lot of guys on nowadays is, you know, in the continent of the U.S., majority of the customers aren't home a lot of the times. So as long as you do a good job, put a flag by the mailbox, and, you know, their weeds are dead in, you know, 10 to 14 days, and the lawn's a little bit greener within 21 days, they're normally happy. And when we had a lawn care company, we had more service calls for guys not blown off the walkways and driveways than we had for, you know. So it's just something I really wanted you guys to think about. And when you think about it, for me, the ease of it and stuff is, you know, I would really challenge on, on square footages, you know, under 10,000 square feet, you might be much more efficient on, on pulling a hose. And yeah, Dave, be- over over here in Michigan, um, where I'm at, southeast Michigan, they have rules where everything has to be blown off. Um, you know, so like you said, that does add a lot more time using granular versus the liquid for me. Yeah, yeah and that's anybody else have that same uh, kind of feeling or somebody just, anybody just disagree with me 100%? And you can. I mean, I'm just I'm just one one long care guy, guys. So you can disagree or challenge me. I'm I'm good with that too. Huh. Not really. Um, and we'll get into the equipment a little bit more because I I definitely there's a couple pieces of equipment that I really seen that I've seen and had really good good luck with. But really, I just I would just really challenge and uh, go through your old your routes and look at your systems and look at it. And you know, I'm telling you, I I've, I've had much much better luck, much less service calls with. Uh, with uh, pulling pull a hose under that 10,000 square foot. Now, over 10,000 square foot, I definitely think mechanized pieces of equipment are, are really the way way to go myself. Um, so one of the big things with uh, going out to converting your equipment is, um, are you guys are you guys running the LT Rich or the Permagreen? Just bought one, waiting for it to be delivered. The L- LT Rich or the Permagreen? Uh, I had a Permagreen and I'm switching to the LT Rich. Are you going with the intermediate or the max? The max. Okay. So um, I have a lot of guys that use both. I have a lot of guys that are used to running the permagreens, and the permagreens are a great piece of equipment. They have a little bit of challenge with uh, getting a gallon and a half a thousand out, which is our biggest thing with with Holganics. We want to make sure we're we're spraying at a gallon and a half a thousand. So that's one of the challenges that on that 12, you know, they have the new new machine. It only has 12 gallons of product, so you're treating about 6,000 square feet. You're filling up a lot. The LT Rich, we've had a lot of good good luck with. And the LT Rich convert make a machine, or you can convert your your old machine. So for around 800 bucks, you can actually convert your old machine, your Magnum, I mean your intermediate or max. And on the maxes, we have some guys you can remove. You can talk to Andy or Tom or anybody over there at LT Rich, and they have a spray ready rig that it takes about the first time will take about an hour and a half to convert over. And it's a pretty easy as long as you can do some basic mechanicals. You're changing the pump, the tips. You're unbolting the four bolts where the hopper goes on the hopper frame, and then the whole assembly goes right back in, in in its spot. And now you can get up to 75 gallons on the uh, on the max, and on the intermediate, you can get 18 plus 25. So now you can get a decent amount of square footage, you know, in the actual market. And it takes usually about the first time, it's an hour and a half to maybe two hours the first time. And after you get done the first time, you can convert back and forth on the LT Rich if you want to put a hopper on for another round or something. It takes about 20 minutes to a half hour. Anybody got any questions about that? It's a beautiful piece of equipment, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah, your guys will definitely love it. Now, the only thing I really recommend on the uh, when you're using mechanized pieces of equipment is make sure you take the time. And the biggest challenge that I'll have guys have is making sure you have the, the right fill-up in, in the van or truck. You want to you, you have a high-volume fill-up because that's going to be the biggest thing is, you know, on the, on the max, you got 75 gallons if you have a – low volume hose filling it up that can get really cumbersome yeah i was going to say will there be a point where you talk about that uh, i do talk about that. Do that yeah i have some and then we you know we'll go over some questions and answer at the, at the end we can talk about a little bit more but that's just one thing you really want to make sure you definitely have a fast fill up 
Um, Permagreen, Gregson Clark does make this. The next slide there is from Gregson Clark. They do make an insert that does go to the old uh, Magnum and Ultra. On the new Triumph, it doesn't work as well, but it does. You can use, and there's some ways out there in the market that you can convert over a Permagreen. Um, the Permagreen does make a spray-only machine, but you can do. Uh, it's, it's something that works okay, and you have to be pretty, pretty mechanical. And I have guys that are taking the Permagreens, taking the hoppers off, and building their own stuff too. So if anybody has a Permagreen, you can do it, but it does definitely takes a little bit more mechanical uh, ability to do that. Um, now I, I think you know the biggest thing for all of us is you know the new equipment. If you're going to get new equipment or outfit you know new equipment there. You know, LT Rich makes a machine that's ready to go, ready to spray whole organics, has the right tips, has the right pump, has everything ready to go for you. I know they're about three or four weeks out right now on all equipment just because of the spring time. It's a little bit, uh, the spring is definitely, I think, uh, came, came across us pretty quick. And the other unit that I really recommend is uh, through Gregson Clark. Everybody familiar with, with the Gregson Clark systems? Yeah. So Gregson Clark has, uh, has a machine. They call their Eco 505 that I think is just, I mean, if you're even not using Holganics, I think it's just a wonderful piece of equipment. For the LT Rich, the Permagreen, all these guys are just, they got some nice equipment out there in the market. But if you were going to pull hose, I would really recommend to look at the Eco 505. And what the Eco 505 is, is that secondary little tank there is for any of your additives. So you can mix your, your biologicals, your Holganics in the big tank. And this is a coaxial cable that is inside there that's really just kind of slick and it's you know one of the cleanest ones out there I don't know if you guys have there's been some other ones in the market in the past that were pretty uh, pretty pretty crude and made a big mess this is the best one that I've seen so far to date that really does a neat job and what I have guys doing is they'll use this injection system it's probably about a twenty five hundred dollar upgrade somewhere around there twenty five twenty six hundred for the it gives you a new hose reel three hundred foot of hose plus a nine gallon injection tank and if the guys have skilled or your technicians have skilled you can go around and you can use this in every single application. And like round one, you can actually mix your, your pre-emergent in. Round two, you're doing your herbicide, your broad spectrum herbicide. Round three, you're doing your quinclorac and other stuff. Round four, you can do your bifenthrins or grub control. So you could really spot treat throughout the entire season. And I think you'll end up saving, you know, paying for the system probably around two or three if you do it correctly. And it's one of the nicest ones that I've seen out, out in the market so far. Can I ask you a question on that? Sure. Um, my question is, I've got an old Lesco 200-gallon Space Saver tank. Yeah, okay. Is, do you know if this is something that I could add you to can. that tank? Yeah, so you have you have, you have the Kawasaki's, the uh, 57 Cowie with the 403 on it, the Yordo yeah. 403? Yeah. So what you do is you call up Gregson Clark, ask them for, and they'll send you just the, um, just the hose reel in the tank. And it's about a 20-minute changeover. You unbolt the four bolts. You take the, your old hose reel assembly off. You could probably use it using the hose anyway. Bolt the new hose reel with everything on it. Take your old intake and plug, plug it right in. It's a, it's a real simple, easy conversion. Oh, okay. And then you so, just pour um, you know, your, your herbicide directly yep. in there without... Well, no, you're you going to water it down. That's a nine-gallon tank. Uh, so a lot okay. of times we have a whole spreadsheet for you. I can email it to you. You can email and ask for it. We have a spreadsheet that you would convert over because that tank is going to treat about 250,000 square feet at, at you know, mixing the, in, into the tank. So what you're going to end up doing is I have a lot of guys that start out, and what will happen is they'll go through and say you're using a two-gallon jug of herbicide every day. You know, you can go two, two to four gallons for the week because you're really over a 10,000 square foot lawn. How much lawn needs herbicide over blanket corner to corner? Certain rounds you might want to do it are new customers. But if you get the customer in shape, it really needs along the edges, thin areas, stuff like that. So you only treat as a dual trigger gun. If you go to Gregson Clark, they have a real nice uh, video of it and shows you how it works. But I definitely think that's something that for any lawn care guy, I mean, just with the cost of, of products, you know, you've got to be really uh, kind of careful because I think it's something that, uh, oh, actually, we have a video of it. So sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Katie set this PowerPoint up for me. So she's logging into it, trying to anyway. It's not working, but if you go to gregsonclark.com, uh, you can really look through there and see that. And what we have a lot of guys doing, the next picture there, is showing you the ecosystem, and that's, a, that's one of Gregson Clark's module systems. So what this customer is doing is they can actually spray the back tanks 100 gallon with, with organics, and they can do their tree and shrub. The front tanks are 200 gallon, and then they have their herbicide only get mixed in the, in the tip of the gun. 
So they can go out on one truck and then use both, both pieces of equipment and knock out lawns that way with one motor, one hose reel. Now, I would recommend that only for a skilled technician. I wouldn't recommend that for everybody, but it's definitely doable. Can I ask you one more question on that, Dave? As sure. far as when you pull that trigger to get the herbicide out, is it going to be almost instantaneous, or it are you going to have to wait for a minute? No, it's instantaneous. I mean, if you, I wish I could play the video and it didn't load up right, and I apologize for that. It is, very, it is absolutely amazing how you set it up. The secondary gun goes into the tip of the gun, and it's instantaneous. And it's a little 40, it's a little Chiron pump or something, a little pump, and it's pressurized, and it's just absolutely amazing. And as soon as you let go, it stops too. So it mixes right at the tip of just the gun itself. So if you look at that, the picture there, the yellow tip, and that where that black guard is, he has it drilled out, and it goes right in the very tip of it. Now, really. is there like a certain thing that you would adjust on there to how much is being pushed out per minute? Yep. Or yeah. So if you look at the on the picture that's there to the right, it's kind of a bad picture. There's a regulator, and you can actually set the regulator to how much. And we have a cheat sheet for that for you guys. If you go to our website, it's on the website, or you can email me, and I will at the end I'll give you my email, and I can send it out to you. You can actually, we have it calibrated for each each thing for you, so you can give you a, a rough guesstimate, and then you just do a simple bucket test for it. Oh, perfect. Any other questions, guys? All right. So this is just showing you is another Gregson Clark the modular system with the 403 Honda 55. And going back to that, what I really think, like guys, is pulling the hose under that 10,000 square foot. This system here is going to let. I mean, the motor's running at idle. You're running about 50 psi. The diaphragms, and you're going to have guys go out and do, you know, your 200, 300,000 square feet all day long, and, and the, the, the piece of equipment and unit will just run forever. We've had great luck with guys with the Honda motors. Really simple, really easy, not beating beating the equipment up, and it works out really well. Really easy calibrating everything. Any questions, guys, so far? I mean, feel to speak up, guys. The air again I a little just bit. Ask, Dave, yeah. one more question. Sure. Um, now, I'm going to be, I'm a smaller company, and I'm going to uh -huh. be running my tank as well as my uh, Z-Max for larger lawns. Okay. And now with that tank, to be able to fill up my Z-Spray, if I were to have that secondary tank, yeah. I mean, what would you think would be the most efficient well, you want to do two things. You can do one of two things. Uh, first thing you can do, let me go back here. So uh, on this system, the picture I have up right now, you can see there's a little, um, the green hose that comes up. See that green hose right there? The green yeah. hose that comes up to the black, and there's like a green uh, knob. In between there, there's a three-quarter inch uh, valve that you can put on, and it's called a quick connect. And then you can fill, turn your Honda motor on, and you can pump up, and it pumps about 18 gallons a minute, which is pretty quick. Or I have a guy who's put in a secondary pump system like a Tiger Flow with about a 25-gallon minute pump that you can pump up. And I'd like to have like at least a one-inch line or something to fill your machine up faster, sometimes a different electric system. Make sense? Yep. Is, is there also a way or someone that you can recommend that could help convert a tank to doing so? Yeah, I mean, Greg and Clark is really good. They have all the pieces. There's another okay. company called Paul B. Zimmerman, and I could probably help you with a little bit and give you some pictures and stuff of stuff that uh, we've had guys in the past. But Greg and Clark has them. You're telling them you're filling an LT Rich up, and uh, Mike and Rhett are the two owners. Mike's, Mike's the guy that answers the phone a lot of time. Rhett's the owner, and they'll be able to help you walk you right through and give you all the pieces you need, and they're really, really okay. helpful. Qu other questions, guys? Not so far. So this is just a picture showing you the LT Rich conversion. Now this is an LT Rich conversion that was the intermediate unit, and uh, what this has on the back of it has a secondary spray system. So just like that ecosystem, uh, Gregson Clark does have a thing where you can actually. Um, that Gregson Clark LT Rich has a secondary spray system that you can buy to do the same thing the ecosystem's doing, just taking care of the actual um, herbicide separately. It takes a little bit more of a technician, but it does def definitely does work. Um, make sense so far, guys? I think I'm going a little bit fast here, but hopefully you guys are catching on or have some more questions for me at the end. So I'll get into the, the Holganics itself, guys. Um, what the Holganics is, is Holganics is a, is a living product that has to be refrigerated. So it depends on that square footage of how much you guys have. We provide you the right refrigeration that handles your needs, and then if you have enough square footage, 
you know, we're going to help you give you something called a rad. And what a rad's going to do is on a normal 200-gallon spray tank, like you would have a 200-gallon tank, I don't know how long it takes to fill up now, but we can have you fill that whole thing up in about seven to ten, less than seven minutes. And what it does, that picture there shows you a lot of guys have issues with uh, water systems. So the toast to the left, we actually have them daisy chains together, and then we have an auto fill. So what happens a lot of times for the inductor pieces to work, you need to have enough volume of water. And a lot of times in, in different shops, the volume of water is sometimes a challenge. So what we do is we give you an auto fill that you would hook up. Then three tanks are tied together, and that now gives me 275 times three, so I have plenty of water to fill fill my trucks up really quick and efficiently. And the, the whole organic comes to you in a bulk system, and then what you would do is on this, the right-hand side there, there's a meter system that you have a switch, a simple a valve. You turn on a valve, you hit a, a, a light switch. It's a momentary switch. It pumps out the whole organics into the inductor bowl, and then you would put in that white bowl, you would put all the other inputs, any of your ureas or herbicides, pre-emergence, whatever round you're on, and then you hit a switch, and it fills up the entire truck within, within like I said, the 200-gallon tank is about seven minutes. So it makes it much more efficient for you guys to fill up because that usually was a challenge that I see a lot of guys having. As anybody, and we have that on, online. If you go to Holganics.com, how we help you, logistics, it shows you how to fill up a truck and it walks you through the entire process. Any questions on that, guys? Nope. Simple and easy. Um, well, we also have had, so that the first one was a, a RAD 300. We have this other unit, too. It's just a this different unit. This is a RAD 330. It's a little bit more of a durable, same kind of thing. It's, uh, you know, if you guys have 130 acres around, you know, four to five rounds, we'll give you this unit for free, guys. There's no no cost to you. It's our unit, but uh, we give it to you free of charge. And what this is going to do is, in that picture there, you can see it has a timer. It agitates the product for you. It comes on a couple times throughout throughout the night, keeps everything agitated, keeps everything simple and easy, and makes the makes it a little bit easier for you guys to fill up and use the the organic product itself. Uh, we do have a RAD 200, which is a little bit smaller, and this is the same kind of same kind of system. And this is just for 72 acres, you know, four to five times a year, you would get this unit. So we have different size units for different size guys that we can provide you, and uh, it's simple and easy, and uh, makes life easy. And this is the same thing, showing you the IBC two to, to the left is just to hold water, and then the, the the RAD itself in the middle, and then the inductor system on on the right hand side. And the inductor system, does anybody have any, any have used the inductor in the past? Or questions about an inductor, how it works, or what we do with it? Nothing? Never used it. Never used it? Well, what it does for you is it's going to allow you to really mix your product, like if you're using Prilled 4600, or allowed to, to mix any of your herbicides and everything. What happens is, and why I, we originally built this piece of equipment was, we ran a lot of trucks, and one of the things we had is we had guys climbing up and down on trucks every day with 64-ounce uh, beakers of herbicide. We pour a herbicide into a beaker, then a guy climbs up on the back of an F-250 or 350, opens up a lid, pours into the truck. And what happened is I watched one of my own guys knocked over the herbicide into the bed of the truck, stepped over the tailgate of the truck on a Ford F-350, slipped and fell and broke a couple, couple ribs. So what I said is I had to do something that's a little bit much safer for have the guys fill up. So what this does, guys, is you have a cam lock that's connected to your to your tank itself, and the guys never have to climb up on top of top of the truck. So everything's mixed at chest height, so they're not climbing up and down trucks. It just makes life much easier for everybody. And that's really what it does. And also it gives you a much better mix. It mixes all the products, so your herbicide, your urea, and everything else just gets through there. That vortex pulls it down, breaks up the urea, and it would actually make it go into the tank and mix much more efficiently also. Make sense? Yep. So, but there is a video online that shows you that. The other thing we have for you guys is if you don't have the RAD system, we do have just the flash fill system too, just the, the IBC totes and the pump and the inductor bowl to work itself. So what would I be fallen into if I'm because I'm right around two little over two million square feet per round and what so what, that, what, what part of the world are you in uh, southeast Michigan so southeast Michigan you'd probably get to get a rad a rad 200 would be the unit we would, we would you know give you or the rad 330 depends on who your distributor is and where, where you're at exactly but it'd be one of one of them two units Okay, because I thought I was told I had to have a certain square footage that right now I'd only get a refrigerator with just, uh, you know, that would hold a bunch of the totes. A bunch of the, bunch of the jugs? 
the four and a half gallon jugs. Yeah. Yeah. So right about two million. I think at like two point two million, two point five million depends on the distributor where you're at exactly. You would get the, the bulk system. Okay. So you'd have to talk to. Uh, I think Dennis is your sales rep in that market. Okay. All right, but it would be probably most likely that that unit there. Um, calibration, you guys want to get into calibration a little bit, talk about a little bit about calibration and kind of that kind of stuff. I mean, this really kind of be interactive, guys. So, I mean, the more we can speak up and the more we can talk, the better for everybody it is. So any questions or comments or calibration is pretty um, pretty basic. So calibration, I mean, do you guys have challenges with calibration? Or not challenges or anything. Just just use the bucket test. Bucket test you, you do most most likely. Is that what you do most most of the time? Yes. Okay. Anybody else use anything different, or do you guys do? Uh, and how how often are you doing the bucket test? How what? How often do you do it? Um, I guess after each tank. Each tank. Yeah. And uh, I mean, and, is, uh, is there a better way, or should I be doing it more frequently? Well, I think it depends on. I mean, two things I have. It depends on on your technicians. Are you out there spraying yourself, or do you have you have technicians? I, I'm out myself. You're out there yourself. Normally, what it comes down to is you can kind of really tell off the tank how much product you're using. So you can really see, you know, hey, I use 10 gallons in this property, 20 gallons in this property. You start to get used to how many how much gallons you can use. But I recommend probably once once a week, definitely. I have guys that do it every day. I think it's a little bit excessive, but it depends on who who you guys you know. Really, if you have the idle speed the right and you have the pressure the same, you're pretty much going to have it's not really going to change too often. Okay. Makes sense. So I have a lot of guys. Rec- that, PSI that you recommend for spraying with this stuff. Well, at, use- so at a gallon and a half a thousand, like on the Honda 55 with the 403, it's right around 50 to 55 P, uh, psi on the on the gauge, and that will get you dialed in there st- partially, and then from there you're going to back it off or on from that. And it's going to be, you know, in your 64 ounces, I think it's 48 ounces in, in 15 seconds is for the gallon and a half of the house. But I think there's another big thing, and I can email, I think, if uh, does everybody have their email addresses, Katie? So I can email you guys a, a nice little thing on calibration that talks, because the other big thing with calibration, you can do a bucket test, and that's fantastic. But then I think there is a little bit of challenge with walking speed and how wide your swaths are. So we've created a, a spreadsheet, a little cheat sheet for you that can, really helps you, shows you the walk, the, 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 you know, how how far you're going left, left and right, and your walking speed, because that does change dramatically on on different gates of how, how fast you walk and stuff like that. So I really, really recommend kind of taking, you know, a, a section and making sure you see how fast you're walking and how you know how you know how far you get with your actual speed. But I will send everybody an email with that, showing you this little cheat sheet for everybody. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Dave. So um, I think I make you know, and this little cheat sheet will really, I think, help you guys a ton. Is this a calibration video, Caitlin? I have Katie here who's assisting me, who kind of does all this stuff. So I'm, uh, she's trying to log it in right now. And I do have a little spray sheet calibration thing here. Hold on for one second, guys. She's trying to load it up now. It kind of gives you a little bit of a, you know, this is Rob Tindle walking through it, going through it real quick. Uh, Katie's going to change the presenter real quick. I'm still on the phone here, but she'll uh, walk you through this to have this video. Dave, I want to go back to the rad again that you were talking about. Yep. Uh, my sales guy, Rob, he recommended um, the refrigeration to me anyways. But I'm okay. about 3 million square feet, and I'm up in Canada here, so is okay. that an issue? I was wondering why I wouldn't have the RAD 200 or the 330 offered. Um, it would most likely be the 330. And who, who's your – Rob Tyndall is your guy? Yep, yep. So I can ask Rob. I think uh, the 330 we have just really uh, brought out in, in, into the market, and it would probably be be the 330 would be the unit that, that you would get. Okay. So that would be, be the unit at 3 million square feet. That, that's enough to, to do it. So you can definitely uh, – I'll talk to Rob, to Rob about that. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. So and the 330 would be the nice thing with the 330 is we can sell you two two 250 gallons at a time, so you can get taken and you can fill up the entire. The thing with the, with the 330, why we built it was because the problem with with the 200 is it actually holds. You guys can throw rocks at me. It actually holds 180 gallons of product, 
Every yeah. time I put the pumps and the valves and all that stuff inside, this cubic feet held 200, but it actually right. only held 180 gallons. And we sell it in 55 gallons and 250. And it was kind of hard for you to take and not have storage. So the 330 actually holds 330 gallons of product. So we can actually ship you 250 at a time and take take an entire tote. It makes life much easier. Okay. So here's a quick little thing on Rob talking about the spray calibration. I think it's about, I don't know if you guys want to watch the entire, entire thing. thing. If anybody, if anybody is, is, it's about, about 10, 10 minutes. minutes. It's about, it's about 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's great. Because it, it kind of explains, explains everything. everything. Okay, do you guys? Hello, everybody. Rob Tindall from Holganics here to talk about sprayer calibration, making sure you're applying the right amount of product down per thousand square feet. So the three things we want to consider are the pace of the technician, the width of the application, how wide you're spraying, and the amount of ounces coming out the end of your spray gun, the volume coming out the end of that gun. So the first thing we could start with is the pace of the technician. So for a simple, easy test, what we could do is simply time, time your technician's pace for 10 seconds. Let's see about how fast he walks, okay? Um, on average, it seems like most guys walk about 3.25 miles an hour. That's kind of an average pace. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna literally time myself for 10 seconds and see what that, what, how many feet I walk in 10 seconds. I've got my stopwatch. Ten. Okay, so ten, I stopped right here. 48 feet. So in 10 seconds, I walked 48 feet. So that's my pace. pace. Okay, so the second measurement is going to be the width. How far left to right are you slinging it? How many feet is that width? Uh, you know, a guy with his taller, longer arms, he might be spraying at a, quite a wide rate, like say 10 feet. Smaller guy, he might be more inclined to spray at a, a lower rate potentially, of like 7 feet. So that's kind of a general range. Most guys are spraying 10, 7 to 10 feet wide. So let's figure out exactly what my uh, normal spray width is going to be. So I'm literally just going to turn the gun on, do it, and then measure it and see what I end up with. Okay, so there is the spray pattern. Let's take a measuring tape and see what that comes out to. Seven feet is what that came out to. So I didn't go exactly to the very end of the little bit of overspray, but my effective spray width where there's proper coverage that I can see here from having done it you know, a couple times, as you saw, is seven feet. So that's gonna be the width. Oh. Hey guys. Hey guys. So, is, so that is that something you guys want to watch all the way through? Is that helpful to you guys, or? That's on the website. We can always watch that ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. It's on the website. website. I just want to show you, show you kind of what it is, and kind of hopefully that gives you a little bit if you do have questions on that. Um, I do want to show you the Katie. 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 Give me one second, guys, and she has another one pulled up on the Gregson Clark to show you that ecosystem. It's a much shorter one. You guys, any, 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 any more, more questions, questions guys? Or, um, I would like, I would like to, to give you guys some more information here. here. He's pulling it up right now. I'm on the internet here, Caitlin. Greg and Clark. Okay, pull this over here, Katie. Is it up now? Can you guys see the Greg and Clark uh, system? Play that, Katie? Okay, yep. The 
Jackson Clark Eco 505 injection system is designed to allow the professional lawn care applicator to selectively apply a pesticide, typically an herbicide, on demand while making a blanket application of fertilizer. Pesticide is injected into the flow of fertilizer instantaneously when the second trigger is pulled. The Eco 505 is a complete kit that can be installed on an existing spray system or included on a new Gregson Clark sprayer. The main components of the Eco 505 are the tank and pumping unit, dual inlet hose reel, coaxial hose, and dual trigger gun. The pumping unit is available with a standard 9 gallon tank or our compact 5 gallon system. Both units feature a 12 volt pump, pressure regulator with gauge, flow meter, and switch. The dual inlet hose reel allows fertilizer from the main sprayer to enter one side of the reel, and the pesticide from the Eco 505 enters the opposite side. A fitting assembly converts the internal side-by-side -side outlets of the reel into our unique coaxial hose. This hose features a small tube inside a standard half-inch hose, which is durable and easy to use. The coaxial hose is available in 300 or 400 foot lengths. The dual trigger gun injects the pesticide into the flow of fertilizer on demand. Rebuilt kits are available for both the main valve and the injection valve. The Eco 505 allows the operator to apply pesticides only where needed. Users typically experience a reduction in pesticide use of 50% or more. For more information on the Eco 505, please visit our website or give us a call. So that kind of explains to you guys there a little bit of uh, what that system is. And you can see there that secondary trigger really allows you to really get, you know, on, on point right there. So as you're walking across that lawn, and there's that patch of clover or violets or something that allows you to really just hit it right there on the spot. And I think it's a really neat piece of equipment that really helps guys out a ton. Any questions on that, guys? Are we still there, guys? Can yeah. hear me? <laughs> I want to make sure we're still there. Everybody's still alive. I know it's springtime now, but, you know. So, I mean, that's really the basics that I got, guys, for you. I hope it's a little bit helpful. I'm here to answer any questions at all. I mean, you guys got any questions for me? I, you know, took a little bit of your time today, so I'd love to answer some questions or help you any way I can. Yeah, there's my yeah, contact. Dave, I had a question, um, you know, Great. with that other tank there. As far as, you know, when, when crabgrass comes along there, um, mm -hmm. is there a liquid that you recommend off the top of your head that, you know, can use with Holganics besides Quinclorac, the granular that I could put in that tank? Well, I have guys that, if you have the ecosystem, the Eco 505 system, there is a whole bunch of products you can use because you can use your Q4 and stuff like that as long as it's not tanked mixed with the actual Holganics itself. Uh, okay. Most, this most, can't be tank with you it. can't be tanked mixed with the Holganics, but in that ecosystem, because it's only mixing just in the tip of the gun, it's not a problem whatsoever. So you can okay. use pretty much anything on the ecosystem because it's not tank mixing. And that's really, when you look at the compatibility stuff, it's the actual, once you have the products mixed with Holganics in that 200-gallon tank is where you have the actual degradation. But if it's just in the tip of the gun, there's, there's really, you can use pretty much anything. And I have a lot of guys that use use the Q4 because they get the sedge control and they get you know both throughout throughout the summer. And you're out there on the lawn, you don't want to be back on the lawn, to, walking the lawn two three times. Okay. Makes sense. And I think, uh, like I said, most guys that use the ecosystem that do pull hose that that they use it, I think the unit will pay for itself, especially with the price points of herbicides and stuff like that. I mean, if you're you know can mix it and use it correctly, I mean you can use it round one with pre-emergent, you can use it round two with your basic herbicides, round threes, and you can reuse it pretty much all season long. And really, you know, really reduce your you know. So if you look at the reduction of you know, over 10,000 square feet, and you need 50% of need herbicide, and then even with the reduction of organics on top of that, you can really get down to that 80% reduction on using your herbicides, which is kind of neat. That I think you can utilize that to be better to a customer. And you can convey that to a customer and say, hey, we're using a, you know, micro spot spray of herbicide. And then also, you know, for you guys, it really helps you guys on the, you know, as herbicide goes up and down and, you know, ties with the commodity, 
if you can use you know 50, 60 percent less herbicide, that that's a wonderful thing for everybody, for your customers and and also for your guys as well. It's, right. Anybody else have anything about equipment or questions or other piece of equipment, T3000s or any other piece of equipment they use out there in the market? Or Dave, you're, uh, I just want to go back to the, the, the RAD 330. Is that on the website? You're saying it's brand new. Is it actually on your website? Yep, it's, it's, it's on the website. It's on the website now. Uh, okay. It's something that we've you know probably only have, uh, I think we have 20 of them out there on the market so far. So it's a unit that we're switching over. And the reason, reason that unit is because it's something that we can uh, we can ship much easier through, L, uh, through like, Less than load carriers, LTL carriers, so we can ship that right to you. And then after you get it set up, it's it's real simple. You plug plug the unit in, and it doesn't take anything special, which is great. Is the old units, the Rad 200 and the Rad 600, was a lot of we had to do a lot of setup ourselves, right. which is was a big challenge as we continue to you know, grow in different markets. We want to have something that was more durable that we can ship. You guys can just plug it in and, and go. And there's no issues of the shipping this to Canada, right? No. Nope. Okay, great. Hey Dave, I got a question for you as far as kind of more tailored towards my size of business where I'm a smaller company. I do have a, we'll be using a Z spray and pulling the tank um, or pulling hose. Uh -huh. Would you recommend having a trailer, everything mounted in a trailer so I could pull my Z spray, have my tank mounted in the trailer so everything's together with one, your spill kits and all that? Do you think that would be a you know, a more efficient way to go. Yeah, I think the only thing you have to be careful with that is um, make sure the trailer has enough, you know, gross vehicle weight. Um, the problem is, is once you put, you know, most trailers, I don't know, where, where, what, what market are you in, sir? Southeast, Southeast Michigan. Michigan. So I would recommend, and I have guys that do that, and what you can do is you can get a custom-made trailer, and I've had a couple guys do this and get a side door, like Wells Cargo does a great job with making custom, custom doors. You do a pull-down or a barn door on the side, barn door on the other side you can fill the tanks up and then you can do a barn a, a gate at the back you want to make sure you have a 10,000 pound trailer though right so you okay. have to upgrade the uh, you know dual axle I recommend dual axle 10,000 pound trailer each axle is you know 5,000 pounds it's going to cost you probably you know for a custom made trailer it's going to give you know I think it's a great way great way to do it it's uh, very efficient if, especially if you're a smaller guy you can use a nice truck to pull it but then you can use it for other things and I do have a lot of right. guys that do that. And you can get away with probably a 12-foot trailer, a 6'4 by 12, and you can get everything kind of stuffed in there, uh, two 200-gallon tanks plus an LT-rich intermediate in, in that trailer. You probably have to go to 14-foot if you're going to go with the with, with the Z-Max. Okay. But uh, if you go to Wells Cargo, I would get one customized. So you have barn doors on both sides so you can open up and get to all the tanks easily. And you would put your hose reel out towards the front, and then you would have your, your drop gate on the rear that you can take the LT rich off of if you had to. And it gives you kind of best of both worlds. And everything's put away, and I think it's also a great piece to kind of put it away and be kind of, you know, sticker the crap out of that and make it a nice marketing piece still. Right, okay. So the biggest thing is just making sure, and I would make sure the trailer has the, uh, you know, Wells Cargo's, and there's other trailers out there, but I've had guys that have used the Wells Cargo, and they're they're pretty efficient, pretty fast, and. I would get the um, the floor, the, the tongue and groove floor, and then it's, it's a 10,000 pound trailer. All right, any other questions, guys? I would like to, anything else I can, I can help you guys with? No. Well, no. what I'm going to do for you guys is I'll have Katie, she'll send out an email with all the calibration stuff. There's a couple little uh, quick, easy ways to calibrate. We have, like I said, we have some cheat sheets there for you. I'll also attach the, the two different videos, the calibration video for you, and also this Greg and Clark video, so you can kind of take a look at both of them on your own time. But uh, my email address is here. I'm you know D Thompson at, at Holganics.com. Any question you guys have throughout the entire season, I'm here to help you as much as possible. And uh, like I said, you know anything I can help you with throughout the season, you can give me a holler. And my direct extension is 209. So the 18665656 Earth, and then my direct extension is 209. Perfect. All right, guys, thank you for your time. Uh, good luck this season. Thanks. All right, thanks, Dave. Thank you. Bye-bye.